Welcome to Aquarium Lighting for Planet Tank series and in this particular video we are going to talk about the color spectrum and how it affects plant growth. Check it out. The color spectrum. All the colors of the rainbow. Now when we look at light itself, especially in daylight, we see a white light. In that white light, different colors from the color of the rain, the spectrum of the color rainbow is actually being illuminated. And we'll explain how that affects plant growth. But first, if you're new here and you want to learn about aquariums and talk about aquariums, please hit that subscribe button and that bell notification so you know when I make new videos as well as do live streams. So to understand the spectrum, we have to actually look at the visible light spectrum which we've seen in the previous videos before. And in this color spectrum, the colors that the plant use for photosynthesis is measured between 400 nanometers to 700 nanometers. Now, when we talk about Kelvin rating, we're talking about the measurement of the color temperature, basically the color that the light's producing that we can't see. That color had no bearing on plant growth. Again, I just have to mention that. Now we will talk about Kelvin rating in a different video because it's actually more about how us aquascapers use that light to create certain effects in the tank and as well as how your plants look. But let's talk about the color spectrum. And by the way, remember this chart where we looked at in the first video? The visible light spectrum actually sits in the middle of the electromagnetic spectrum, right next to UV rays and X-rays that give you cancer and gamma rays, which turns you into the Incredible Hulk. Pretty cool, huh? We're actually irradiating ourselves and the plants in our aquariums, but it's okay, don't worry, it's harmless radiation. Now in the previous videos, I said yes, we want reds, we want blues, but we also can't discount green because you use about 80% of the green spectrum to grow. And that's why you'll see a lot of that term being used in the lighting products, because we want reds, we want blues, and especially we also want green, so we want a nice, good, full spectrum. Again, like I mentioned from the previous video, Plants do grow differently depending on how much of the spectrum you're giving them. We're going to take a look at a quick study done at the Michigan State University Extension from the Department of Horticulture. They did a cool study on how plants grew under a combination of the color spectrum used. They used a plant called Vista Red. It is an aquatic plant, but the concept is roughly the same. They started it from a seedling and grew it for four weeks under LEDs for 18 hours a day at 160 par. If you look here, the letters are the colors blue, green, red, and hyper red, and the numbers next to them is the percentage of that color used. As you can see here, the plant grown under the red spectrum is tall and thin, whereas we look at the plant grown under the all blue spectrum is short but more full. The plant grown with the even spread of blue, green, red, and hyper red gets a result not too far off from the plant grown under all the blue spectrum. But what's really interesting is the results of the plant grown under the green and red spread. As Spock would say, fascinating. But how do we know if the light is perfect for growing plants based on the color spectrum? Well, this is one of the good things because this is one of the great things about those companies, those manufacturers out there that makes the very popular light. They actually give you a chart. Let's take a look at it and figure out how to read it so you'll know what to do when choosing out the best light for your aquarium. To begin, let's go back to the absorption chart we saw in the first video. Chlorophyll A absorbs blue best somewhere around 430 nanometers and red somewhere around 662 nanometers. Now let's throw chlorophyll B on the chart. We see it absorbs blue around 453 nanometers and red around 642 nanometers. And from the effective power rating chart, we see that green is used in the middle of the spectrum as well. So, what we want to know is how well a light fixture will do in these areas. The Fluvo Fresh and Planted Spectrum graph looks like this. It's important to know that we're looking at a chart based on an LED fixture. The reason why this chart looks kind of funky is that Fluvo is showing off the different colors of the diodes they're using and how it reflects the spectrum chart. So for a moment, just imagine it as a solid graph. As you can see, the light fixture provides blue in the range we want from this peak and provides the red in the range we want from this peak. And with the green, well, we get that hump that we want over the other part of the spectrum. This is a great example of what we want to look for in the light. Another example is this. This is a spectrum chart for the Physio Spec Greenhouse LED fixture from a company called Fluence. This is a very solid light for growing plants. Now, before you go up and pull up Google and hope to grab one of these baby, know that this is a greenhouse fixture. Now, I'm sure you can use it for planting tanks, but it's what we common folks call overkill. 
you'd have to do some major adjusting like hanging it high over your tank and also it's not cheap either. And finally, let's take a look at this. This is a chart for the Waypoint Ultra Growth Wave T5 high output bulb. Again, it covers the reds and blues pretty well, but it has that spike in the middle. It would probably be better if it was a hump, but we can always compensate with another bulb if we really want to push the color use in the middle of the spectrum. See, this is one of the things about T5 high output fixtures. Most people use a two or four bulb fixture, which allows you to mix and match bulbs based on what you need at any point of your planet tank life. Now, you can't really do that with the LED fixture. Even if you custom fit an LED, you're pretty much stuck with what you have afterwards. Now, remember in the last video how I mentioned that depth does affect PAR rating based on the color spectrum? Let's go over that really quickly again. As we mentioned in the last video, depth affects how much light will get to your plants. Since blue light has shorter wave, it has more energy. The more energy, the more depth it could penetrate. Whereas in the opposite spectrum, we have red that travels in longer waves, so it doesn't penetrate depths as well as blues. Now for us planet tank guys, it shouldn't matter, as we don't start to lose red until we're 5 meters, or for our Yankees, 15 feet deep into the water. And unless you're Joey Mullen, 5 years in the future from now, deciding his next do-it-yourself project is building a mini ocean in his backyard, I think you'll be good. When you look at that, let's talk about the ocean. This is why when you go scuba diving or go deep underwater or you're watching films that are filmed underwater, it's very blue because the light is penetrating into the depths of the ocean. And it's an important thing to understand why we always see reef tanks and the color is always blue. It's because we're trying to replicate that natural environment for corals, okay? The corals live down in the depths of the ocean. So in logic, you know, we're going to provide it with that blue light that it needs to grow. Does that make sense? You getting it? Because it does get a little hard at first, but once you get it, you start understanding the type of light and what type of light to buy for your planet aquarium. In the next video, we're going to quickly talk about light coverage in your tank and how important it is to grow your plants. Thank you for watching. Remember, if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and that bell icon as well as share, like, and comment on this video where you can. And remember, I love you guys. Get wet with your tanks. I'll see you in the next video.